Hey Canucks fans, let's do some contract negotiation updates for some of the Canucks free agents. I'm Canuck Clay. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, July the 4th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Happy Independence Day to all of my American friends and subscribers and viewers on this channel. Thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. I would say that was probably my, one of my top five most memorable live streams because we gifted 32 franchise memberships for one month. They're free. We tried a new feature on YouTube. It's called membership gifting. Jason Lim started off by gifting 10 memberships and then it was legendary Justin Credible, legendary Lucas Gates, Alfred C Edits, and Shannon all got into the act by gifting memberships as well. So now we are up to almost over 50 members on this channel. Now my job is to make sure that you franchise members, your new ones who are on this one month trial, that you are convinced to stay afterwards. So I will work on that over the next few days. So once again, thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. Make sure you check out the replay if you haven't watched it yet. Start at the 20 minute mark because all heck breaks loose from that, that point and it's a lot of fun and you could tell I had no clue what was going on, even more so than usual. No Canucks after dark tonight. Both Parker and I have hockey games, so we're gonna do it tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 10 p.m., and then my next live stream uh, solo will be Thursday night at 10 p.m. Okay, let's talk about some contract negotiations for some of the, I don't wanna say insignificant or less significant players, but uh, in terms of salary, some of the less significant contracts here and all my info comes from Rick Dollywall you guys know that among all the insiders I find that Rick Dollywall has the the most timely and the most accurate info because he doesn't um, he doesn't report things for clickbait he's very connected to many Jim Rutherford the GM of the Canucks sorry the the president of Hockey Ops um, um, for for the Canucks he's very connected to many players and player agents especially so usually when he, uh, Dollywall tweets something, it's indeed true. So according to Rick Dollywall, let's start with the uh, let's start with forward Yuho Lamico. Yuho Lamico is an RFA, a restricted free agent, and really the update here is that him and the Canucks are talking. So you might say, well, Clay, that's not much of an update, but it's good to know that they are talking. We know that Lamico came over with Noah Julson back in October in the trade for Ole Ulevi, sending Ulevi to Florida and these two players coming here. We know Julson got a, a new one-year two-way deal last week and Lamico as an RFA, the Canucks are looking to extend to him as well. Lamico was great. When he was with Highmore and Mott, when the three of them together, they were a surprisingly very effective fourth line. When Mott left, not surprisingly, their effectiveness kind of went down a little bit. But Lamico can still be an, a good fourth line center especially if you can sign him for cheap. Now, he only made 725 grand last year. So even if he gets a slight raise of 750, 800, even 825 or 850, that's good. You need to be able to sign your bottom six guys, someone like your bottom six guys to a million dollars or less. So talks ongoing with restricted free agent, Yuho Lamico. I like his game. I like his hustle. He improved in the face-off dot. He's, re he's responsible defensively. So I do think he can be an important part of the Canucks going forward, especially on a cheap contract in the bottom six. Two UFAs that the Canucks um, had that may look like they're moving on. One of them is Brad Hunt, local Maple Ridge boy, 33 years old. He made 800 grand last season. And he, oh, by the way, Lamico played in 75 games. So almost played in all 82 games. And I believe he had 15 points in those 75 games. Brad Hunt played in 50 games for the Canucks, which seems like a lot because you don't think him as a number, true number six defenseman, but with the injuries to Tucker Pullman especially, um, you did see Brad Hunt in the lineup a lot because oftentimes it was OEL and Myers, it was Hughes and Shen, and then some combination in the bottom pairing of uh, a Kyle Burroughs or um, you know Tucker Pullman when he was healthy, and then a Brad Hunt, and Hunt could play both sides of the ice, and that was, and then Travis Dermott obviously came in for the last part of the year. So Brad Hunt played in 50 games for the Canucks, so almost two thirds of the season. He actually had 17 points in those 50 games, so not bad offensively actually. One point out of every three games for Brad Hunt, 33 years old from Maple Ridge. He was making $800,000 last season, but it looks like he's not going to be in the Canucks' plans 
next year, especially when you consider that they want to make room for Jack Rathbone. I've always talked about you can go a top six of OEL Myers, Hughes, Shen, Rathbone, and Dermott. And that doesn't even include Kyle Burroughs, who's still under contract for another year. And that doesn't include Tucker Pullman, who may start on the injured list. We'll see how he recovers from his concussion. So you can already see that according by contract, if you already put Rathbone ahead of Brad Hunt, even though he's less experienced, Hunt is already looking at being a number nine and moving up to number eight if Pullman isn't healthy. So you can see why Brad Hunt is 33 years old, maybe wants to try and latch on to another team even if it's not his hometown team. So Brad Hunt likely on his way out of the Vancouver Canucks. And then another player likely on his way out is Ford Nick Patan. Patan also loco. Patan only played in 18 games for the Canucks, registered two points in those 18 games. I actually like Patan's game out of the preseason. I liked his speed, I liked his hands. I thought he was gonna be way more effective than Alex Chason at the time, because Chason I thought was too slow and I, I thought he had brick hands. Well, he, he, Shayson was still slow, but he was actually um, quite good with his hands and he made a believer out of me and I, I'm willing to walk back and I'll admit that I was wrong with Alex Chason. However, with Nick Patan, he barely got a look, only in 18 games, so not even a quarter of the season. And yes, bottom six role, but didn't really make a dent. Really, really wasn't noticeable. So it'd be no surprise if Nick Patan is also on his way out. So again, that's Yuho Lamico negotiating with the Canucks, much like Matthew. So Lamico and Highmore are in the exact same spot. They're both RFAs. So we hopefully, you know, we can sign each of those guys for 900 grand or less. Then it looks like Brad Hunt and his $800,000 salary and Nick Patan and his 750 grand salary. They look to be moving on. Hunt, as I mentioned, there's too many guys in front of him. And then with Nick Patan, I think if you're looking, uh, you're bringing Kuzmenko, uh, um, you're bringing in um, probably Will Lockwood's going to get another chance. Maybe even a Sheldon Dries is ahead of him on the on the depth chart. You can see that probably Nick Patan's days are numbered here as well. So not a heavy update today, but thanks to Rick Dollywell, at least we have an update with some of the ongoing contract negotiations with some of the Canucks free agents, both UFAs in terms of Hunt and in terms of of uh, Nick Patan and RFAs in terms of Yuho Lamico. So Canucks fans, let me know. Let me know if you want Lamico back and let me know, you know at, at how much. And then also let me know if the losses of Patan and or Hunt are gonna make a dent at all for you, at least in the way that you view the Vancouver Canucks and your Canucks viewing experience. Shout out to my sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training Weight Loss, and Advanced City Experts Real Estate Group, and to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, and legendary Andrew Chang. Thanks to Hall of Fame members, and thanks to franchise members as well, especially all of you new franchise members who are here for a month for free. I hope you enjoy your time here. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, leave a super tip or thanks, uh, super thanks or tip, I should get that right, a super thanks or tip if you'd like to, become a member or upgrade if you'd like to, and definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to, your thoughts on this news or this kind of holding news, a holding pattern with Lamico, Hunt, and Apatan. Not the biggest news ever, but at least it was a bit of an update. And finally, if you made it this far in the video, eight and a half minutes in, um, you know, because it's, it's uh, no, I was gonna say USA, but that's, that's kind of goofy. Uh, because we're here, um, you know, let's do this. I'm back at work. I'm back in my familiar confines of my car for these vlogs. So uh, why don't you, <laughs> this is a little kind of long, but if you say car vlogs for the win, then I know that you made it to the end of this video. So again, car vlogs for the win, and that then I can express my appreciation to you for watching this whole video. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks, go.